From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome into the most ridiculous podcast in sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hello. You can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this cold beer and let's get after it. I didn't even prep. I forgot to take it off of the. Oh, ah, that got all over the computer. You know how <laughs> I feel. All right, Pucks Out is powered by Mayday Brewery. Uh, I've got the uh, angry redhead. You- I'm. I'm. A, I'm. I'm rocking the inner sanctum today, actually. Got a, got a few uh, of daddy's money back there, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going with the inner sanctum. Nice. Uh, Mayday is the official beer of Pucks Out Podcast. Join them this Friday and Saturday for Jazz and Jambalaya in the Rockin' Arts Fest. And don't forget, they're doing bingo every Thursday now. Also, there may be Gambo, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say be, you said Thursday. The yeah, bingo. Thursday's I, I was a bingo. too busy not listening to you trying to get that joke out, and so I missed <laughs> the bingo thing. So, uh, all right, uh, today we've got some NHL news. We're doing our NFL predictions. We've got a guy uh, who didn't have a great day, but he got some Taco Bell, uh, and we're talking the summer. That's of always Bond. a great day. Yeah. Not summer of bond, but the <laughs> but the Taco Bell. Uh, don't forget to check us out on What a Maneuver and Patreon to support the show. How are you this week, bud? Uh, pretty good, man. Uh, not doing too bad. Just you know, enjoyed the Labor Day weekend. Uh, it's you know, I got got a little uh, had a few drinks yesterday and totally forgot that it was recording day. And so you know, a little tired, a little uh, a little hungover. <laughs> I, I generally try not to drink on a Monday night. Uh, so. But I'm good, man. How about how about yourself? Pretty good, man. Getting over. You know, I thought uh, thought I had COVID, but it was just the regular flu, thankfully. So I, you were not vetted. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, you know, I got some family members Mi- who who are still down with it. So uh, you know, just being safe out there. I uh, hope everyone else, and especially in Tennessee, Tennessee's got the numbers are bad right now. So I hope everyone else. I think being we safe. would be like the uh, if we were our own nation, we would be like number two in the yeah, world. Yeah, so. it's pretty wild. Uh, But let's jump straight into the news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice. It's time for news from inside the boards. I'm excited. NHL players are headed to Beijing for the 2022 Olympics. Not they're not headed there yet. But they'll they'll head there when it's time. Travel restrictions (laughs) are tough right now. They're 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 already on the plane. Uh, and it's all of them. Apparently, yeah, all it's all them. NHL players. It's going to be a whole league is yeah. going to going to to Beijing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Gary Bettman finally, I guess, are, is allowing players to play in the Olympics. It looks like, he's and like I'm that's, excited for it. He's like that thing's going to get canceled. I yeah. might as well. That's he's why like, he's doing it. Yeah. He's like he's like yeah, for sure. Go for it, man. Yeah. Go. Con- for he's it. like that contract though only says 2022 Olympics. Only 2022. We'll have to figure it out on 2026. Yeah, if that's possible. Well, it's 2023. Well, well, it's not in the contract. Oh, hold on, buddy. Not 2023. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's a very important year for the we NHL. We are traditionalists here at the NHL with our Olympics. No <laughs> odd numbers. We don't do odd numbers. This is not how we roll. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I'm really glad. I mean, I know we've talked about it before. It, I mean, it makes Olympic hockey fun to watch. I mean, yeah. not just. You know, for USA, but I mean, for, for I Canada. I rarely watch it like the past when they don't have NHL players. Yeah, I wouldn't watch it if it was college basketball players playing in the, you know, in the Olympics. Yeah. You know, like, who cares at that point? But uh, but for all teams, I mean, Canada, Russia, you know, Sweden, Finland. I mean, it's, well, uh, you it's can't, a big not deal. Russia, it'll be the Russian Olympic Committee, which is when you think about and this is going to be Isn't a little that bit wild topic, that their, their their punishment was that they can't. Uh, be called Russians and they can't play the Russian national anthem. So instead, and they can't also can't uh, wear anything with the Russian flag on it. Instead, all of their jumpsuits just have 
red, white, and blue in the same order it is on the flag, but it's not officially the flag. Where it's like, this is just, these are just colors, bud. Yeah. Come and on then, now. And then the best part is <laughs> that they're, the anthem they play when they were anything at the summer, on the Summer Olympics was Tchaikovsky, which is probably more Russian than the Russian That's national anthem. Exactly. <laughs> they, they play the Russian national anthem backwards. <laughs> and it sounds better. Yeah, than- <laughs> like they're playing like, like all time great classical music that from Russia. And it's like, okay, that's cooler than the Russian national anthem. This is dope. And at first they were like, they can't be called Russians. It's like, cool. What if we call ourselves the Russian Olympic Committee? You're fine. And that's okay. They're like, those are very clearly different. (laughs) Putin's like, Putin's like, I walked out. That's like, he's like, man, this, this was the easiest negotiation I've had ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Olympic Committee doesn't have an army, you know? So I had, they do. They're just good swimmers. Hate to see you, uh, Go the way of journalists here in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before we move on, I do have a fun fact that this somehow this reminded me of. You know what's wild to me that I found out? Mong- the, the country of Mongolia has a navy. A completely landlocked country with, with no lakes and no rivers. And, well, you know, they might have some rivers, but they have no bl- bodies of water. They have yeah. a standing navy, which is well, just it's, that's, insane to me. Well, that's very accurate, though, Bobby. They're all just standing because ah, there is no... There is no, uh, you know, nowhere to go. They're like, they're like, get to the coat. All right, guys, stand down. We're good. Uh, when I when I found that out on on the couple tweets down, there's this scene from some like Viking anime where they uh, they're not on water, but instead what they do is they pick up the longboat, a bunch of Vikings, put on the shoulders, and they run the longboat into battle. Yeah. So that's what I'm imagining the Mongolian <laughs> Navy does. They just have a, they just have horses drag the boat. Well, it's like a big. It's like a. It's like a huge like. 700 ton battle cruiser that just like <laughs> they have to have like 4 million horses just <laughs> grr, grr. like you can see them coming they're like well it's like when they get see here, all the horses when they make that mile in the next 10 days it's gonna be bad they're like everybody look out okay <laughs> they're coming uh the nhl and the nhl players association agreeing to ter- uh agree to terms on teams being able to suspend players without pay who don't get vaccinated and i believe that is on the stipulation if they get if they get covid dope yeah and immediately you know half half the country was like hell yeah immediately half the country was like that's against my first amendment right damn it and then they're like what's hockey <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those people were like the nhl yeah. even tony d'angelo was pissed and he yeah. was like what's hockey i don't know yeah, he's like i don't even understand is that, that thing that adam fox does that i don't do well, yeah <laughs> i mean i've heard of it i've heard uh good man i think look that, that should be it should be more prevalent across the country right now. Yeah. Like, dude, I don't want to deal with this for any long, bro. Like, I enjoy doing stuff. You yeah. know, I mean, I don't want your grandma to die. You know, I mean, yeah. depending on who we're specifically talking about. I mean, I do, but not from COVID. Like, you know, yeah. natural. Getting like hit a by a train. Falling. Like getting hit by a train or like, yeah. you know, like you said, a piano falling. A classic. Because at least a that's classic a death. It's a classic death. Yeah. You know, it's a classic death. You can't go wrong with a fallen piano. It's like, why were they moving a piano? Ah, you, you know, those guys, they just move pianos up they're and down sh- for no reason. Got it. And they're doing it with like some sort of rope. Like, bro, take it apart and just put it up there. I don't know. I don't know. If you I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the logistics, but I mean, it feels like there's machinery. Yeah. Use the machinery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, J- uh, Jasperi Kakinyemi, uh, J- uh, 221, joins the Hurricanes as the uh, Habanadians won't match off the sheet of one year, 6.1 million. That's a good pickup for them. And I oh, am, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's uh, that's I mean, him, him joining Sebastian Ajo. That's a, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it that's is. That's a lot of money. I guess if it's just a one year, though, you know, I mean, gonna that's a work, lo- They're going to try and lock him up uh, for longer. Uh, in return, they get two 2022 draft choices, uh, one in each of the first and third rounds. So not, not, not a horrible return on uh, good young talent. On not spending $6 million, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially since there are rumors, uh, and I rely, I'm putting a heavy emphasis on the rumors of Jack Eichel possibly going to uh, uh, the to Montreal. You he's, heard it here first. He's currently there, you know, right after the news broke, and it was coincidental. He's got a hockey camp in Montreal. News, this rumor broke, and immediately, like within an hour or two, there was pictures of him boarding a flight to Montreal. So, of course, right. Hockey World just blew up. Right. And it turns, and they're like, he's even going with his sticks. And it's like, you realize that it's like the off season, <laughs> right? Like, if he was 
getting traded, he, his sticks and his equipment would be he on just like ship it. Yeah, yeah, he's going up for like a week long hockey camp, so he's taking his sticks with him. <laughs> like, if anything, that I would imagine a, that he takes his sticks everywhere. I imagine know, all like, hockey players do. Right. Like they're going to Kroger, they got their sticks with them. It's like, oh, like what if there's a a Kroger, you know, game? Yeah. We've talked about this before being an option. <laughs> To happen, you know, like what if it one is busted out, dude, and then you don't have a stick, and yeah. then you got to use one a stick that's not yours, and it doesn't feel yeah. right. You know, you can't. Do not that. great. Um. All right, that's about it for hockey news. Uh, we're coming up soon. Uh, starting next week, we will start our division previews. Uh, for, and uh, we'll go each team by division. We'll. Uh, will we get anybody fired? Oh, of course. Excellent. Yes. Uh, but let's move into uh, news from outside the NHL. I hope it's Urban Meyer. Now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with news from outside the boards. NCAA football started this past weekend. Woo! Um, yeah, I'm here for it. I'll watch football. I watched the. Uh, I did watch the Wisconsin Penn State game, um, and that was a uh, uh, that was boring a, that, football. Yeah, it was boring football. I mean, Clemson. You know, UGA, I didn't watch it, but I'm assuming was it was also boring football. football. Yes. Um, I wish I'd gotten to see the Notre Dame game. Didn't get the, I honestly, I completely forgot it was uh, the football starting this weekend, and I just didn't watch any. I literally, the only reason I watched that is because I was going through Hulu, and I was like, oh, let me see what games are on. I'm like, I don't want to watch School Mary's School of the Blind play Alabama. Mm-hmm. Don't want to watch Vanderbilt. It was, actually, it was actually Miami. It was supposed yeah. to be a decent game. Yeah. But, um, I, I didn't want to watch Vanderbilt get shut out almost by their cupcake game. That which was that was I mean we'll talk about that, uh, but yeah. So, uh, what are your quick predictions for the uh, NCAA season this year? As far uh, who, who do you, you think is going to win the national championship? Alabama. Off? Alabama. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, I mean Clemson and Georgia. Neither of them. It wasn't like a fun defensive battle that you watched, like the. You remember that Alabama LSU game that was three to nothing and it was just each team, each of them were just beating yeah. the absolute piss out of one another each series. It was nothing like that. It was offensive ineptitude wasn't, on both was, sides. So was, I know that there was a true freshman quarterback on one side. True was, freshman. Was there a uh, another, were they both freshman quarterbacks? Because what I read was um, that the quarterback play was abysmal. Uh, that is, that is uh, too big of a word for me, Bobby. Uh, true freshman quarterback <laughs> or abysmal no, abys- abysmal <laughs> uh I- I- is there a is there a way to say abysmal times like a hundred because it was rough dude there was one touchdown scored all game and it was a pick six uh it was it was bad and now clemson's Cle- clemson's quarterback didn't get a lot of help from his offensive line i mean he was laying down quite a bit but it was neither of them had a great outstanding defensive game. Like neither of the teams were making all of this happen. It was just so bad offensively, in my opinion, Yeah, that it was it was hard to watch. Which dude. sucks because, you know, and, and I'm going to talk about it later, but one of my, my biggest complaint about college football, other than the, you know, the stuff that happens off the field, which is looking like it's starting to change a little bit is the first couple of weeks I, I hate because of the cupcake games. And so I, I will watch sit down and watch a, top 20 matchup yeah. those i enjoy well, i sure. sat down and watched penn state and wisconsin it was a good nail-biting game it was it I was would have been I, I, big I, 10 football yeah. is what it was i mean it wasn't th- those two team, two teams had and you it know was, it was talented players it was good football they're not known yeah. for their offensive prowess yeah. Def- that that was to be expected for that yeah. game for sure it wasn't and, like the, and honestly I, I watched that game the first half deep, it, it was good defense and then the scoring oh, got opened I, up oh, and, and it became a good offensive showdown in the it's, fourth quarter. It's boring football yeah. for sure. But I mean, that's the way it, I'm glad to Penn state one. That's yeah. going to make and I, uh, one thing I did. It, I called it background football. I was on my phone. I was looking up, I was watching it, but I was like eating uh, <laughs> lunch. And so that's what I, you know, obviously if I'm watching a big sec game, like if I'm watching, if I was going to watch that, uh, that Georgia Clemson, game, that's a, I'm watching that game. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have sure. been not happy. You probably wouldn't yeah. have been. <laughs> you probably would have, yeah. you probably would have got on your phone. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, we were glad, uh, Sass and I were glad that Clemson or at Clemson, Penn State won. Keep this, keep the hype up a little bit for this Auburn Penn State game coming up, dude. We're going to Happy Valley, dude. It's going to, oh, it's going to be so sick, man. I'm, uh, I'm so excited about it. Uh, but, you know, Auburn had a good game against Akron. Uh, we, 
dominated, bro. So, yeah. I mean, you know, the ta- the highly touted Akron team uh, was a was a, probably a championship contender pre yeah. getting and stomped by the, us. Uh, the the dominance of SEC football. Vanderbilt, uh, what was the final score? Forty six to three yeah, it was, against it e- was, Eastern Tennessee. It was it ETSU. was not it was not good to uh, to very little. And <laughs> that's actually better than it was going to be because there was a pick six called back against ETSU for what was probably the biggest bullshit call. And even the commentator called uh, the ref on it. They called the pick six uh, the the defensive back for taunting. He was alone. He was on like the 10 yard line. He put the ball in the air and he turned around before he got in and like walked, trotted in and celebrated. They called it taunting and called the interception back, called it all back and gave it back to Vanderbilt. And they still wow. couldn't score a touchdown when they were like the three yard line. It was that. it was not 40 something, but it was 23 to three, well, which is like it was, you know, it was not good. I mean, yeah, if they had been playing a other SEC team, it probably would have been like 40 to something. It well, was bad. You know, everybody, we wouldn't even be talking about it because that's just par for the course. We only yeah. hit, we only hit, take breaking news yeah. here. Uh, Vanderbilt only shows the, uh, up when they play UTK. <clears throat> that's about it. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I honestly talk speaking of speaking of UTK. We went over to my folks' house that Thursday. That's when they played Bowling Green. I am, I, I mean, I'm, you know, it's not, you know, Bowling Green. They're not the the greatest team. I was impressed with with uh, with Milton, their quarterback. There, uh, I like the style of offense they're playing. The real, real quick, um, you know, a lot of offensive plays. I don't think that they'll be winning the yeah. East or anything, but I think that uh, I think that they'll. You know, break a break a heart or two along the way. Can't wait game. to see him play Bush, Bishop Sycamore, though. I don't know, though, man. I mean, that's the greatest team in the whole whole country. They got like all of their players D one recruits. D one, one hundred percent of them are, are, are D one recruits. Can't confirm it, but we've been told. But also, can't deny it. <laughs> I mean, they're playing on ESPN. They have to be good. Um, yeah. So I'm. Uh, I mean, I was impressed with a few a few different teams. I. Every year, every year, I get tricked. I, you know, I get, I, I get to talking to, uh, talking to my dad, and we're talking about the, you know, Alabama Miami game, and we're like, I mean, they lost a lot of folk, and I had already said like, oh, I was like, they're just replacing them with new guy. Yeah. But then, you know, we get to talk, and I'm like, you know what? You're right. I mean, the the spread is plus nineteen and a half. I'll just put a little bit of money on on Miami. It was like. I was, I lost that bet by like <laughs> the end of the you know the end of the national anthem. <laughs> like I was done. I was out. Like I was like, please, no more. <laughs> yeah, I mean they. I hate it. I hate it yeah. so much. But uh, I mean, it's hard to say that they're not going to be. I mean, that squad man, again. The way, the way Delta's going through Tennessee, maybe if it goes through Alabama, maybe then other teams will stand a chance against them. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I think the guys that they just pull off of like the, their practice squad are just like five star recruits that are just yeah. hanging out till those their chance, man. They're they're just so ridiculous. I, I, I'm ugh. Ugh. I, like I've always said, college football and NFL should have a regulation with, promotion system. What's up with your boy trying to murder people? Oh, dude? yeah. I didn't even put that on the dock. I know. For those of you, I just said we were going to make jokes about it. Yeah. So. Uh, for those of you who probably you've seen it on Twitter, Brian Kelly uh, called for the execution of 100 college days males. Uh, I mean, I, technically, he, that's what he said, but all, it's not what he All ages meant. past 18 are generally college age, Bobby. <laughs> anybody can go to school. Don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise, folks at home. Uh, but yeah, so he was quoting a... He wasn't even quoting. He was referring to a quote from, I think, like uh, John McKay or something like that from yeah. t- Tampa uh, about his was pretty. John McKay's yeah, was pretty fun. That, that landed. What did you think about your player's execution tonight? Oh, I'm for it. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Saying, that was a good joke. But, but when being asked about how your team played, and you say, you know, I, I, I'm in, I'm in favor of execution. I think all my players are. I think our players should be executed or something like that. It wasn't to that effect. Like he kind of played it off, but like you know what he was trying to go for. At first, and... when I was told about it, I didn't see the video. I was like, oh, he probably like misspoke and said we need to execute better and i watched it i was like that's just bad like you don't like yeah, that's i mean the- he kind of played into it a little bit it was but it was it was it's yeah it's a non-story yeah. in my mind clearly he's not i mean he's not actually calling for these kids to be killed exactly but it's still just it's a 
Well, I, we had talked about, we had discussed whether or not we wanted to make it the joke of the week. And I was just like, nah, I feel like we're playing, we'd be playing it up a little much. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was stupid and it was out. But I mean, this is a, a, you know, a Sunday night. You're the only game playing. You're going to overtime. Yeah. You had a commanding lead throughout the game. Like, and honestly, I am of the mindset that <laughs> when you win, especially a week one win in overtime, if you've not complained, obviously every coach after a t- win is always going to have their critiques and how they can play better and how they you know if they play down the opponent, take it to the locker room. Don't immediately after the game on the field call your team out, call your team out after a win. Like just go tell your team. I don't know. I think calling like, them the, out was fine. I think the way he did it was not. Like I would yeah, I would have been mad if too. If he had said like, "Hey, you know, obviously we could have played better, but we got the win and, you know, we're going to we got stuff to work on." That's fine. But like trying to make a weird like joke. And it just cl- didn't land. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just weird to me. But I'm for call. I, I, I didn't mind the calling them out. It's more of just like how he approached it. Like if he was like, you know, this team could have we could have done a, a lot better. I'm really disappointed in how we got yeah. this win like a win's a win. And that's all that's going to matter at the end of the year. But honestly, it's also not like since there is a committee yeah yeah. there's a committee that decides who goes i mean that and and a team that doesn't have a conference championship like notre dame does every given year you never know who is going to be good and bad on notre dame's schedule so i mean it's tough when you're at a school like notre dame like you're supposed to be an elite like they are supposed to be an elite. They Somebody still, should tell Brian. They Kelly. are. They are seen by the <laughs> com, by the uh, ranking committee as an elite school. Players are s- maybe starting to not see them as an elite, but I mean they're still getting blue chip players. Yeah. And like like I told you in that text, it as a Notre Dame fan, it really saddens me that they have become content with just being a, just above average. See, I don't think they're content, and I just think it's exactly as you said: is the players don't see it. Like the, these kids don't see it anymore. You know, like they don't yeah. see Notre Dame as that school to be yeah. touted like it used to be. You know, I mean, who cares if, oh, they get to play on NBC? Well, nobody ain't nobody accidentally watching an, an NBC game because there's no games on before it. Yeah. How many great players do you discover because you were watching a game and then the next game comes on and just there was a time to be when, on? There was a time when every single week, no matter where you were in the country, Notre Dame might have been the only game you got to watch that week. Sure, sure. And, that, and at that point and, in time, that's when that mattered. But now you can, well, you, now, you can get any on game you Sunday, want. Now on Sunday, we watched Dion's Jackson State playing like, uh, who was it? It was some other little bitty school on ESPN Plus. Like yeah. there wasn't any other football on. But we can watch. We can watch football. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is not. A, it's not a problem anymore. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Brian Kelly, and they. Me either. It's like, like I said, it, that is still an elite position, co- head coaching job. I, I, do, I do agree with and that. And they can do better than Brian Kelly. I do agree. They have been struggling at head coaching for the, for a long time now. Yeah. They had what's his name, the guy who went on to. I can't remember his name. The big guy. I can't remember his name, but uh, what's his, uh, Charlie Weiss? Charlie Weiss. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's been bad. But what about old Dr. Lou? Yeah. Dr. Lou Holt. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, let's move on. Yeah. All right. Uh, Patriots named Mac Jones starter as Cam Newton is cut from the oh, roster. Oh, snap, Bobby. No uh, excuses now. Yeah. No excuses now, baby. I'm happy because honestly, the biggest thing that was stressing me out was that Cam Newton was going to play. And I, like I said on the show, the water bet I made was that Patriots come in and I didn't put the stipulation of Mac Jones has to be the starter until after we agreed to that's it. That's what you said. Now, that, well, it wasn't a stipulation. You said that's what I think is going to happen. And that's why I'm making yeah, this bet. But, yeah. but we agreed that like it did like it didn't matter. Yeah, it, it, but now because, I, I, I'm happy because now I, I believe <laughs> this ha- makes me happy. I believe that Mac Jones is without a doubt the better option for the Patriots, whether he's the better fundamental quarterback. Yeah, I don't I, I agree I, I, I with don't, that. He's not, I don't think he's a better athlete. Cam Newton is a freak athlete. I think, though, in this in this particular system, Mac Jones is the better option. And clearly, when, uh, you know, according to former uh, Patriots linebacker Rob Ninkovich, uh, uh, Mac Jones ha- was helping Cam Newton learn the playbook. Cam Newton, by the way, has been there longer than mac jones technically right and well i would imagine a guy like uh belichick probably just like completely revamps his playbook every year yeah. you know <laughs> uh but so uh, mac jones was having little to no mental errors throughout the uh off season while cam newton was having trouble learning in simple plays remembering the playbook uh was unable to run no huddle plays and uh refused to do two minute drills 
I don't know what's happening to Cam Newton when you're fighting to even keep a starting position in this league Mm -hmm. and you're saying, no, I'm not going to do two minute drills. Yeah. Like you're not in a position like you're not, especially when you're with Bill Belichick. It's not like he's you're working with some rookie uh, first year coach and you you can go and be like, listen, I'm going to I'm like Aaron Rodgers can go and say, you know what? I'm going to call some plays if he's working with a young coach. Like, no, if Bill Belichick tells you to do something as a quarterback, just do it. Well, and it, and two minute drills should be your bread should should have been Cam's bread yeah. and butter. No huddle and and uh, two minute drills should be where you outshine Mac Jones. Yeah, You're, you but may not have his pocket presence. You may not have his, you know, a throwing, you know, motion or whatever or ability to learn a playbook. But then you got to go in there and you got to do what you yeah. know you can beat him. And, at. you know, I was watching some uh, some press conferences and something that I never thought I would see that Belichick showed some actual like insight and some emotion. He pretty much said Mac Jones, he believes, is some of the has the highest football IQ he has seen in his entire career, which is saying a lot because usually <laughs> Bill Belichick will just say, yep. Yep. Well, uh, Mac Jones is going to get out there. He's going well, to do what he needs to at, do. At this point, we can't. Unless he's just trying to stick it to know. Tom Brady. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. At this point, we don't know if this is true or he's just trying to say, you know, you know, forget you, no. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas but, and I, Brady. Unfortunately, I didn't get Mac Jones in any of my drafts. Oh. Uh, I, I was never in a position to get him and reach for him. But like. I got him in a dynasty. Yeah, league, that's bro. great. And that's I, I'm, I'm jealous of that. But deep second round. I think, I think, Mac, pick. Yeah, I think Mac Jones is a future star but before we segue i do want to ask you about trevor lawrence um what what do you think his first season uh uh under center is going to look like do you, are you excited for him or do you think he's going to have a rocky start i think he's going to i mean i think he's going to have a rocky start at no fault of his own is that if that makes sense so, i mean i just don't like I the was, team that's I was around looking at some him stats looking back i believe the last the last six uh Quarterba- uh, quarterbacks taken first overall who have played the entire season uh, for fantasy wise were 6th, 7th, 13th, 12th, and like 8th. Yeah, that's just a, and, that's number. That's that's attrition though. You That team is uh, you generally behind and they have to yeah. throw a lot and you know and ain't no lost points for no, incompletions. Yeah, I'm, I'm you talking know? about him. Spe- I'm not talking about the Jaguars. Either. I'm talking about Trevor Lawrence. I think well, and I'm gonna, I think he'll put up some stats yeah, well, if that's I'm, what you're I'll, asking. I'll go as far as saying I believe Trevor Lawrence will break the record for most yards thrown by a rookie quarterback this year. I don't think that. I, I, I will, I'm not going to worry about it, yeah, but, let's, yeah. but I want to write it down because I am calling it. Okay. I, I really like Trevor Lawrence. I think he's going to have a great season with the Jags. Andrew Luck. And, yeah. Andrew 4, Luck. 374. With Justin Herbert right behind. I don't think he's throwing 4,400 yards. Call it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not okay. going to call 4,400. I'm saying he's going to throw the most. Who will he? Who, yeah. I mean, well, for, I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. I, you well, know I don't what I'm saying. You'd be like, oh, you said 4,400. No. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it was, it was, it was 4,399. Gotcha. No, no, I'm cool with, uh, yeah. I mean, Nah, who's he gonna throw him to? If that's that who that'd be I'd be intrigued to hear your like, answer of that. I mean, I, I mean, I think DJ Chark uh, is Allen Robinson. Do you think there? that DJ Chark is gonna have a forty four hundred yard season? <laughs> no, Allen Robinson's on the oh, Bears. That's, okay, that's right. Yeah. Keelan Cole's gone. I think DJ Chark's gonna have a good year. Uh, oh, I, be, I mean, look, I mean, he can have the best year ever, but I mean, if he's the only guy catching the football, eventually they're just gonna triple team him. Well, I think James Robinson is what I was thinking about. Uh, it was James Robinson on the. Uh, He's a running back, though. Yeah. Okay. Who they had a Robinson in at? Yeah, Allen Robinson oh, played well, there. Okay, did he? Le- okay, yeah, I guess, he uh, went he's to. Been, the... He's been in Chicago for a while now, hasn't he? Yeah. He, okay, for some reason in my head, I thought they had a Robinson at. He uh, had a dope. I mean, DJ Chark, Tyron Johnson, and Terry Godwin the are IR. the number three on the on the depth chart, and he's on the IR. He's not even a guy, <laughs> if I, we're being honest. And, and then Marvin Jones, Marvin yeah. Jones, and Jamal Agnew. And then there's LaVisca Chanel. There's a reason why I didn't water bed it. Yeah. No, and LaVisca Chanel, I'm actually. Chanel, yeah. I'm actually, uh, I always call him Chanel. Because <laughs> I think it's cooler. Uh, I always, I mean, I think he's pretty good. I think he'll be. I think LaVisca okay. is going to have a great season. I think that honestly. Tavon Austin is still playing football? <laughs> well, he's on the IR, so maybe not. <laughs> he's just been on the IR forever. <laughs> What's his injury? Old age. He's just old. <laughs> he's just a guy. 
Um, no, I, th- I mean, I look, I'm, I don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't think he's going to be a bad player or anything. I just don't think he's throwing 4,400 You got to throw some hot picks, at, uh, some heat out there every once in a while. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. But, know, bringing some entertainment but you're to the people. On, but you're betting on Trevor Lawrence and the Jags, so... Yeah. Well, that's what makes it a hot pick. It's not like I'm going out there saying, "Oh, Aaron Rodgers is going to throw you well, know for the most bet, he's ever thrown." You like, know, like I would have, I would have been like, "Oh, you know, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll bet you, and I'll water bet this. I'll bet you Zach Wilson throws more yards than Trevor Lawrence." Who's I mean, like, you think he's going to be the most prolific yeah. rookie quarterback no, yeah, yeah, ever? I mean, I, clearly, I'm going to take that because my—I mean, that goes along yeah. with my first one. So, so, I mean, I can't say yes to one and no to the like, other. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's water bet it. Throw it on the dot. Okay. And I think that way, you know, either way, one of us gets to win. Yeah. Uh, we just can't change in the last minute where we're both somehow losers. You, you <laughs> did that. You agreed to it. I agreed to it because I'm definitely going to lose. <laughs> So, like, I wanted to get a little bit here. <laughs> All right. Let's move into our main topic of the day. We're talking our NFL predictions. This is a football-heavy episode for a hockey podcast, but it is what it is. We're in the uh, tail end of the offseason. Uh, we're going to start with the conference championships, and we have the same AFC, and, and uh, but different NFC. AFC, I got the Bills beating the Chiefs in the conference championship. You got the same thing. Same. Uh, yeah, same thing. Uh, the NFC, I've got the 49ers, one of the worst teams in the league last year. Going worst to first. Uh, I've got uh, the NFC 49ers versus the Rams. Uh, Rams getting in there with the wild card. And I got the Rams beating the 49ers now. Yeah, I have. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going too far from where it was last year, obviously. Uh, po- uh, I'm going Packers and Bucks. But I have the Packers winning this year. So, so question. Do you think then that this will be the last dance for Aaron Rodgers? At least on Green Bay? No. No, I think I think that and I and I called this way early. Yeah. I think it's all been uh, being overblown. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. I, th- I don't think it was overblown. I am not surprised that he's back with them. I think that there was I think that he is genuinely not happy there and he doesn't. But he's realized it. But he, well, he that's because reali- they keep drafting garbage. Picks. I think he eventually realized that, honestly, like he's been he spent his entire career there. He might as well. I think this is honestly I think this is his last year. I think win or lose, he's call, he's he's I hanging say, up. The, I would say he retires before the Packers let him go. Yeah, and I think he wanted to do it this year, but I think some, you know, whether it's you know, he's got too good of affair, and well, he's, he's got too good of a team, yeah. dude. He can win a Super yeah, Bowl this I th- year. And I, th- I think that if he wasn't in a position where they could re- like possibly be a ch- be a chance at winning a Super Bowl, if he didn't have Devontae Adams there, he's retiring, dude. If they win the Super Bowl, you think he he retiring, dude, with it. No, nah, bro. He coming back for another no, no, Super no. Bowl. I think that if they go to Super Bowl and lose, he retires. I think if you, I think if you win a Super Bowl as a quarterback, you're coming back. Like, nah, I think yeah, I think he'll, I think either way, if he makes it to the Super Bowl, dude, question, he's coming. If they back. miss the playoffs, is he retiring? No, he's gonna try to get out. So either way, he's else. not retiring in your mind. No, he, okay, no, okay. he's not done. Okay, I mean, nah. he doesn't have as many, he doesn't have as much tread on the tires as a lot of the other older quarterbacks like that. I mean, he didn't he didn't start playing for Green Bay for like two or three yeah. years. You know, like. Um, all right. So Super Bowl, I've got the Bills over the Rams. Got the Packers over the Bills. All right. I like yeah. how you got a divisional matchup in the uh, in the NFC Championship. Yeah, yeah, man, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, MVP. Uh, I've got Josh Allen. Oh. I think Josh Allen is a. But he's not going to win his division. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he is not. And I put it down there. Uh, no, I, I, I wonder think, when the last time my quarterback that won the MVP didn't also th- win their division. I'd have to go. Uh, I'm sure it's happened. I mean, I'm, yeah, no, I'm not saying it's never. I'm just saying. I, well, I want one of those ESPN stats guys. Like, they have the craziest stat. Yeah. Yeah. So I will be very intrigued if your MVP. Uh, and, and you get the right MVP, but they also don't win their division. I can't see it happening. So uh, I have mine as Patrick Mahomes. I yeah, that's a, uh, that's a solid one. I, mean, I, I, wanted, I thought you know, that too. It's like, ne- you know, it's definitely negative odds if I were to bet it. But for a reason. Oh, wait. I was, my, the research I was doing, I'm an idiot. I was researching Super Bowl MVPs. You were searching MVPs of the season, correct? Correct. I was looking at Super Bowl MVPs okay. uh, that didn't well, win their division, which... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I Which was considering I've got the Bills beating the Rams. I would I assume he would also be the Super Bowl MVP if I've got him winning well, sure, the sure. season MVP. Yeah, I was talking about season MVP. Yeah, and, and, yeah and, and rightfully so. I was just. 
And that's who, and is that what you yes. thought Josh yeah, yeah, yeah. Allen was going to be? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to make sure we, we didn't just need Which, to pick a new pick. I mean, I wrote it, so I'm sticking with it. But in my head, when I wrote Josh Allen, I was thinking Super Bowl MVP. And that's mm-hmm. what I think I meant when I Well, put, you can change. I mean, yeah. we're not locked into yeah. this if you yeah. thought it was something yes. different. So <laughs> in my head, I wrote Josh Allen as a Super Bowl MVP, season MVP, Patrick Mahomes. Like that is, yeah. So I'm going to, I'll I'll change that real quick. I, yeah, uh, pick you. Yeah. Okay. Because in my head, yeah. I was like, because once you said it, I was like, that he has, he makes good, but I kind of wanted to stick with my guns now. Uh, I mean, dude, it wouldn't have been a bad choice. Yeah. I mean, because then you could have won one or the other, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm assuming for your Super Bowl MVP, you've got the Aaron Rodgers, or, or are you going Devontae Adams? Uh, I'm going somewhere different. Or you also go Josh Allen, but just the rest of his team sucked in the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, no, I guess I'll go A.A. Ron. All right, we got our division winners. Uh, we're not going to do the full standings because that's insane. This is a hockey podcast. Yeah. Uh, but uh, starting out in the NFC, uh, I'll just go down west, north, south, east. For some reason, I don't know why, but like that, that sounds weird, but in that order. It is weird. Yeah. But at least it's in. No, it's not even in order of, like, <laughs> yeah, of the compass. North, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess if you go. Boom, I'm, boom. I'm going to do east, south, north, west. So if that makes <laughs> okay. any better. Uh, uh, NFC West, I've got the 49ers, which I think is the hottest pick of, of these, unless you got something crazy. So hot. Uh, <laughs> NFC North, I've got the Packers. I, I don't know. I would say that my my AFC North is probably a hot pick. NFC North. Uh, I'll get, we'll get there. Uh, AFC North. Okay. I was like, NFC North Packers, huh? Uh, <laughs> hot. So <laughs> NFC hot North, right I've got the Packers. Uh, NFC South, I got the Bucks. And the NFC East, I got Washington. My reason for that is not just because I'm a homer, but you know, honestly, if Ryan Fitzpatrick can just play above average, which he can, I think they've got that division locked down. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think their biggest competition is going to be the Giants, and I just don't see the Giants mm. putting something together. I mean, you think Dak Prescott and the Cowboys are going to? Yeah. They they would they would have won the division easy last year if he would have played all year. So I'm just I'm not betting I don't on think injuries he's all year though. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not betting. I don't bet on injuries. Yeah. I'm saying at this point in time, this is yeah. who I think will. I just have to assume that he's going to play all year in my mind. I can't count out Fitz Magic, baby. No, no. I mean, yeah. I think Washington is going to be very strong. So yeah. don't give don't hear what I'm not saying for sure. Um, so my NFC, uh, East, South, North, and West, because uh, I'm going to go the opposite <laughs> of you. Uh, I had the Cowboys winning, uh, winning that division. I think that uh, they got some weaponry there, and uh, you know Tony Pollard is is pretty good, and uh, no Andy Dalton. I think right there, that's yeah. six wins. Yeah. That's six <laughs> wins to your schedule. So who is Dax backup? Because uh, with him, that's Eze- what we should know. Eze- uh, Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. No, I don't know. Uh, I have no bring idea. Bring back Andy Dalton. Uh, for, they just keep him in the stands. He's not allowed on the field. Exactly. Well, he's a bear. Know. He's a Bears guy well, now. They're gonna. He, he, they're yeah. bringing him back. <laughs> yeah. Come on <laughs> back, but he, he's playing Iron Man both sides. When they play, he's got to play quarterback for both sides of that game. I uh, I do have the Bucks in the South, same as you. Packers in the North. I think that those two are. I mean, we're always surprised, but I think those are two. Yeah. You can't really go outside of those. I mean, I think the I'm not betting on J- uh, Justin Fields, yeah. Kirk Cousins, or Jared Goff. I, mean, I think the Vikings are. I think everyone else in the NFC uh, North or in the NFC North is going to have, except for the Packers, is going to have under five hundred. Yeah, I don't know. I Packers. think the Vikings will be okay. I mean, they might go like at five hundred or one game above five hundred. Honestly, I, I don't have confidence in them. I don't. No, no, I don't trust Cousins. I think that they. I think that they have probably the best set of skill positions like Justin Jefferson that's about it but again Dalvin I, like the, Cook. I don't like the guy throwing it I like right I like Madison I mean yeah. I, I like well I like Irv Smith he's hurt right now uh but I mean yeah I like I think that their skill positions are great I just can't trust Kirk Cousins no no one um, should and then um I don't the like Rams, that. the West, I have the Rams winning. I think Stafford's going to go in. Yeah, and I think, have a I think real the 49ers chance. and the Rams are going. Obviously, you think he, the Rams are going far. Yeah, you just I think, don't think they'll win the division. Yeah, I think that, it, honestly, the 49ers and the Rams, it's going to be a, I think that is going to be the matchup of the season. They're going to play twice in the regular season. I think they're going to, uh, you know, I think they're, they're going to, I mean, obviously, I think they're going to play three times this season, but I think it's going to be good games. I like what the 49ers so. have done this offseason. Um, I could see them going, uh, I forget how many games, I think 11 and four. Does that make match? How, there's 18 games in the season. I guess it is the first season of 18, right? Yeah. 
Um, no, so the eleven and four would be fifteen games. It wouldn't even be enough for the old. So thirteen school. and four. Thirteen and four would be seventeen. Okay, fourteen and four. I think the Forty Nineers. I'm not great at math. Getting, they just keep getting better and yeah. better. You, I, I sounds four, like you have it locked down that they have four, which four losses are happening. <laughs> no, that's. I mean, no, it's not a crazy idea. I like Shanahan. I think he's a good coach. I think he knows how to win football games. Yeah. Um, and I love honestly, I love Sean McVay. I think Sean McVay is. I think prime to be the when when the old group retires, I think Sean McVay and I think for 20 years from now, we'll see Sean McVay the same. We see Belichick. Maybe uh, I just think that he needs to obvious. Uh, obviously, I there think are things that he needs to do along the way a lot of luck relies on that. The players you draft, making sure you don't get sure. stuck in that middle ground like some teams have. Well, you know? if we're being honest, you know, we're both going to end up being wrong on that because the Seahawks are going to win. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that's probably what's going to happen. I just still be there? High. Yeah, that's wild to me. I mean, he's won a Super Bowl, dude. When? How long ago was that? Like, I know I'm not saying win, like win. Like, I yeah. believe, I know he has, but like, it feels like it's been a long time. I feel like obviously he's won a Super Bowl, but wasn't it like the Chicago Bears coach who I feel like every year was just flying under the radar and never got fired? And he was just like, oh, like, <laughs> uh, wasn't it? Uh, who was it? He was there for like 15 years, wasn't he? Um, I, I don't know. I might have said Chicago Blackhawks. I meant the Bears. I think you're talking about Jeff Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they won in 2013 so i mean eight years ago but but i mean in that time frame the patriots have won like five times dude like <laughs> the coach before matt Nagy, wasn't it like whoa. oh i mean it's lovey smith if that's who you're lovey talking smith, about but he smith. wasn't there that long he took him to the super bowl though it was the yeah, first how uh, long was lovey smith there i believe he was there for way too long he was there past he should he went been. to the super bowl uh let's see it's gonna say like 1985 <laughs> No, it was like no. He played. They played the Colts. Yeah. It was the first time that yeah, two I, African sure, American yeah, coaches faced each other. there for a long time. I mean, two thousand four to two thousand twelve. Okay, pretty maybe it's a, it's it's different coach. I'm thinking about that, and obviously not Jeff. Fisher. There was some other coach in the league who was just uh, at his team for way too long after he should have been fired. Um, let's move on to the AFC. Uh, I'm going to go west, the same as I did before: west, north, southeast. I've got in the west. I've got the Chiefs. Same. North, north, I've got the Browns. Not the uh, same. South, I've got the Titans. And East, same. I got the Patriots. Not the same. Uh, so I'll give you my East and my North. My East are the Bills. I think that one is the, I think you've kind of gone off the, not the reservation, but you've gone off the beaten path here, taking the Patriots. It's just history is showing me. Sure, sure. No, yeah, I'm, we, not, we I'm not. I'm just over, saying, yeah. like, I'm just saying, you know, the Bills are yeah. the prominent to win it. Uh, and I think this is where I kind of went off the beaten path here. It, not not way far, not going off the reservation or anything, but the the Steelers. I actually have the Steelers winning the North. Okay. I mean, any given year, the Steelers is, can come in and win is the Is James Conner? No, James Conner's at a different Arizona. Team Who's their starting running back now? Najee Harris. I do like that. I, I was, I, I was going to come out with, I don't like it, but I like that. I think that's, that's going to yeah. be a really good addition. Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson uh, still being there. I think question do you think juju uh juju progresses see? or regresses i think he roughly stays the same i'm with you yeah i'm, I don't, I'm think, all, I, I don't think he's it, gonna be it, terrible if but i had to pick one i think he regresses a little bit but chase, i think he mainly stays there. i think chase claypool is in for a he big is season. a he is a physical I, I was able to get him in one fantasy league and i think he is going to be a star he is a physical specimen yeah. um and i think deontay johnson is going to be their you know their their go-to receiver Big Ben doesn't have that deep arm like he has in the past, um, but uh, I can never count out the steel curtain and uh, and Mike Tomlin. I, I think he is a great football yeah. coach. Uh, so I, I'm going to go with the Steelers. Uh, Jameis Winston, what do you think about his, uh, his how he's going to do this year? I'm I, I'm pro. I mean, you know, I've been pro Jameis Winston, and I thought it was kind of uh, a shock to me that Taysom Hill got the start. Uh, last year over Winston. I think he's not a really smart guy, but I think one he's in the he's 30 a, for 30 club. He's a physical athlete. Uh, so I think that I think he's going to do well. Sean Payton's a great football coach and they have some good yeah, weapons. They, there. there was actually a stat I, I want to look up. I was thought about on the way here. Obviously, Bruce Arians is a great quarterback coach. Um, 
I mean, he coached up this relatively unknown guy, Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. What what, so. what a young talent. Uh, but I'm interested <laughs> to see what quarterbacks do after they leave Bruce Arians. I think obviously he threw 30 interceptions. I wonder if his um, if his if he's going to be throwing more or throwing less. If that impacts if that if, offensive if just the, line, if just the amount that he was throwing under Bruce Arians, obviously it inflated is, those stats that everyone looked negatively. No, down in on. my opinion, it is completely not fair to talk about that year. I mean, he's going to throw interceptions. That's yeah. just who he is. It's not fair. That was the probably the most atrocious secondary that the Buccaneers put on the field, and the teams were just scoring on them at will. You had to throw the football. Yeah. You had to continuously. And uh, I just, I just never thought it was fair. I think he'll go out and throw a lot of interceptions this year as well. I don't think that that's like gone or anything. And, and I mean, that is a little bit of who he was, but he kept them in a lot of football games that maybe if he made the right decision and had to take a sack and, uh, with a bad offensive line, that maybe we're not talking about how bad Jameis Winston is, and but we're also not talking about them ever having a chance to win a football game without, without who he was. So, yeah. um, where do you think Tamis, uh, Taysom, uh, almost a Taysom Winston? Winston. Uh, where do you think Taysom Hill, uh, his, his uh, what do you think his spot in this team is going to be? Do you think he I remains think gonna, that gadget player that he's yes, been? Because that's what he is to yeah. me. He's and, not a quarterback to me, and I love the guy, and I think yeah, he's a really I, good guy, and I think he provides. So much the offense. He is not a starting NFL quarterback, in my opinion. Yeah, and honestly, there was a time when I was all aboard the Taysom Hill train. I thought he would be, but from what I've seen, I think he plays. He has a position on that team, and he's a he is a NFL quality player. Yes, not an NFL quality quarterback. In 2018, 2019, he seventy eight percent of his offensive snaps were either tight end or wide receiver. Um, this this offseason, he's been working heavily uh, on inline uh, being a blocking in the backfield, um, and I, I believe we'll see his receivers uh, uh, snaps go up this he, season. He was great at playing at, at running in there and playing quarterback for a play or two. It's because like, dude, you as an NFL coach cannot plan and yeah. game plan around a but guy if, that's going to get six plays. Yeah, but if you plan for him, that. He's not that guy. It eliminates it eliminates his his advantage, yeah. in my opinion. To be honest, I don't like either one of them as a quarterback. I don't think the Saints are going to do well. I don't. I, don't I think, think they're going so to be either. relying heavily on Alvin Kamara, like any team would be with it, with that stud in the backfield. But also, you throw in the fact that they're for sure not playing home week one. We don't know if their second home game of the season is going to be at Mercedes Benz. We don't know. Like they could be playing outdoor games, and for you now, obviously for guys like James, I think he, for fantasy though, I mean, it's uh, he's an undersold gem. I think you're going to get some points. You're talking him. about Jameis Winston. Okay, Jameis Winston. Okay, yeah, no, not talking. Yes, fantasy. Yeah, I think there, there's, I, there's, I just want to throw I think that there's value in him because there. of where you could get him. Value is um, for sure the best. I don't way think I talking explain. pure football. I don't think he is going to. No, he's not going to win your team yeah, a Super Bowl. I, I, I definitely don't think. I don't think you had him as a division winner. I definitely don't think they're winning the division. No, I probably. I'm thinking Carolina is probably going to going to rank above them. Yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, let's move into our joke of the week. The weird. Corey Perry. Yeah, I don't like that. Oh. Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me. It's time for the joke of the week. What a story. What a story. Omaha man stabs himself in the leg while driving. Holding a knife. And eating Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, traffic safety officials always say you shouldn't drive while distracted. More specifically, you shouldn't drive while talking to your friend on the phone, eating Taco Bell, and holding a knife. They didn't even give us the full story in the uh, in the headline. He was also apparently talking on the phone. Um, well, it was Bluetooth. He was talking to somebody on Bluetooth. Okay, fair. Unfortunately, this 39-year-old Omaha man did that Thursday and inadvertently stabbed himself in the leg. He just picked up some food at the Taco Bell near 38th and Dodge Streets, Great Taco if you're Bell. familiar with Omaha in any, any way, <laughs> just before 2 a.m., which is where all great Taco Bell stories yeah. start. Uh, and it was on his way to give some to his girlfriend. Just some, though. Just like, hey, here's a couple tacos, girl. What's up? <laughs> um as he was driving and eating, because, I mean, you know, 
Taco Bell's the best travel food when you're in the car. Uh, he later told police he was talking to a friend on his Bluetooth speaker and uh, looking at the knife his friend gave. <laughs> He's talking to him on the phone. Bro! This knife. Dude, it's 2 a.m., but like, bro, I cannot stop looking at this knife. I think I'm going to open it. <laughs> he drove, then drove through a large pothole or hit a bump in the road. They don't even have the story. They don't know. They don't know. The jolt made him accidentally stab his right thigh with the, <laughs> with the knife. <laughs> The man was left with a one to one and a half inch deep puncture wound. That's in his deep. Top th- yeah, that's like a deep. That's like a deep puncture wound. That's bigger than this guy's penis, dude. Like it was deep. <laughs> Not as big as that burrito, though. Nah, the burrito, dude, is half pounder. Yeah, it's a half pounder. Uh, the man <laughs> then headed to the nearby Nebraska Medical Center, where he waved down some security guards and asked where the emergency room was. Taco okay. Bell should seize this moment. Excuse me, young man! <laughs> young man, where's your emergency room? I've stabbed myself in the thigh. They're like, <laughs> is that a cheesy gordita crunch, bro? <laughs> uh, uh, that's it. That's pretty much the whole yeah. story. I'm sure at some point there will be an update, but uh, at this point... Yeah, we need to know what order he had. That, I yeah. mean, it's good to go, right? He had to have the crunch wrap Supreme. And what drink did he get? Baja Blast, no question. You do not go with an open knife talking to your buddy about the open knife that he's giving you to a Taco Bell to deliver Taco Bell to your girlfriend at 2 a.m. And not go to Baja Blast. And get a Diet Pepsi. Like, no, bro. Listen, I get Diet Pepsi from Taco Bell, but not at 2 a.m. You've made your choices in life, okay? If it's daytime, I'm a a Diet Pepsi guy. Lock it up. I'm not not hating on Diet Pepsi. I'm just saying, let's be real, Bobby. If we're putting money on this, there is no way he got anything but Baja Blast. Yeah. I mean, that's a dumb bet. There was. You, but it's Baja there, Blast. There was. There was. There had to have been. I would have to imagine that looking at this guy's receipt, if it's anything like my 2 a.m. Taco Bell run. Now, he was driving. Hopefully, they didn't mention anything about him being drunk. It just sounds like he's just a guy. I, I just I just cannot imagine that the bill is anything less than $40. You know? Yeah. I mean, you just blow it out. When you're in, it's that late. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's move into our pop culture summer of Bond. I saw the spy who loved me. I saw the man with the golden gun. Um, the spy who loved me was, without a doubt, one of the absolute worst pieces of cinema I have ever seen in my entire life. I, it, it sounds like it, I saw the opening scene, and I feel like I'm not usually this guy, Bob. I don't think that we're legally allowed to call it cinema. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not a film. Okay. Uh, for those of you, go on YouTube, type in the spy who loved me opening scene. It is a it is something you would see in an undergraduate film class of people who don't know what they're doing. It's bad. It, I don't know where they got the stock Bobby, music from. I feel Clearly like, a 70s porno. I feel like that is completely you're falsifying. This is not a not a college film class at all. This is like when you're forced to make a video project in high school. Okay. <laughs> That's more what it was like. Yeah. So Yeah, it was it was bad. The plot was bad. Um the acting not great. The someone say bad. Yeah, the the, the I guess the good part, if you can call it good, uh, I guess relatively it's amazing, is the I believe his name is Eric Keel or Richard Keel. Um, he Dick is, Keel. He plays. Um, <laughs> it's the actor who played uh, uh, Happy Gilmore's boss, the construction guy. You know, the really big guy from Happy Gilmore, oh, yeah. the nail on the head. It's young him, and he plays a a villain called Jaws. He plays a like a a, you know, sick, a henchman, man. and he's got these metal teeth because of his because of his natural born deformity. His teeth are kind of uh, nails in his head, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but his teeth are kind of uh, awkward because of, of the uh, condition he suffers from. So he had like these metal teeth that I had to look. I, I, I it mean, sounds like it sounds like, buddy, that small children bullied this man into becoming an international criminal. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, but so I got so bored with the movie. Richard Keel. Yeah, Richard Keel. I started going into his filmography during this movie because it was the only shining part. Apparently he suffers from a 
severe fear of heights. And there was a part where he's like, there was, he was supposed to fight James Bond. He's oh. seven two as yeah. well. So That's he's dope. always scared. <laughs> yeah. But he had to fight on like some cable car, like 2000 feet in the air. And he assumed when he took the job that it was going to be done in like a studio. No, they were going to put them on a, they actually put them on a, pulley car 2,000 feet up in the air like fucking maniacs so yeah if I'm an actor I'm also not doing that man sorry and so he had a stunt double and apparently that caused some ruffles on the set when they wouldn't when he would do that it's like yeah because I'm not a madman I'm it's not like, doing bro, that for this James Bond movie this is a James you know he's dead I had no idea yeah he died in 2014, 2014. I believe yeah. yeah I mean you really did get up into his IMDb oh. right all the way through he played he did some twilight zone stuff it looks uh, like he uh, i don't know if this video is like a part of it but it looks like he did some like james bond like video game stuff yeah, he, yeah he did he did voice acting and gave his likeness but he is also the only james bond villain to be in two movies he, he really? makes a return he ends up biting a shark to death at the end of the movie with his metal teeth it was That's boss dude. yeah listen when i say he was the only shining spot it was I we could just talk about what he did the whole time. And I'd be interested in that. No speaking parts, but real good. At, no, um, not, not a single speaking. No, part. not that I saw. He doesn't say anything. No. Now I did <laughs> see that. Like, so the metal, uh, break, like the metal mouthpiece he had in, he said it was so excruciating and made him bleed. He could only wear it four minutes at a time. And when he told the producers that they're like, cool, we'll try to keep scenes of you wearing it short. And they had to edit it because the first scene had him wearing it for like 15 minutes. And he's like, I, I can't. I mean, and, and then, then they, they were like, apparently on, uh, he started bleeding. They were like, can you do anything about that? And he's like, I could like bleed more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can continue sure. to, I can continue to bleed if that's an option here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel bad because I mean, I don't feel bad. I, you, you really brought this whole thing upon yourself. Uh, but you know, I watched the man with the golden gun and it was not, bad it wasn't too bad i mean you know it left a lot to be desired as general <laughs> but uh so far that's what we've come to the conclusion that all these movies yeah a lot it's to be desired. like uh you know nostalgia does not play in a, a part a part for either yeah. of us so like we don't like them i can't help but feel like all these james bond movies are are the quality of uh, of porno movies that have like a real plot to i it can't help but the think porn. i can't help but think that nobody actually likes them, but they feel like they're supposed to. Yeah, hundred percent. You see what I'm saying? Like, especially when I found out that the spy who loved me, which they said it was like based on Ian Fleming's. Then I find out literally zero bits of the plot in the movie came from the book. Nothing, not except a, for there was James Bond. Just you James said, Bond. You did and say I wouldn't be surprised. Like, and actually, the spy who loved me book it was the first only one who didn't have James Bond. Yeah. No, I mean, like, so now I wonder how often did they do this with the, the other books? I'm sure. I'm sure it was quite a bit. I, you know, I like the man with the golden gun was great to me. Not great. It was good. It was better than some to me because like the whole plot line was like this guy trying to get James Bond to come to his yeah. island so he could have this battle with him. Yeah. And like it was like a whole thing, and like the the little person that is like his boy, like controls stuff like on the island and stuff. And you know, it's the golden gun is dope. I mean, yeah. he was a great shooter, he popped off on some people. But obviously, you know, James Bond came out victorious, as you yeah. can imagine, because you got to see him in the next film. It was, uh, it was, it was not horrendous now one thing that i did like as far as continuity goes is one of the first scenes is when he runs into some james bond runs into somebody who has heard james bond because clearly by now he's not a, he's a shitty spy so he's become he's like a terrible so spy. he's like at, at a table and he's like bond he's james like an bond. influencer and, and this woman who's not a spy he's like oh i know that name you're so and so and immediately he's like be quiet you old and he's hag. like he's like weren't you, she's like you weren't you married or didn't this and you could tell like they're trying like because he's supposed to be James Bond but yeah. everyone else doesn't know like it's a different it's just a different alias because a lot of people they might not know the the face they know the name and he's like oh I don't like talking about that uh, and he's like oh maybe I don't think he's like once you married to someone and he's like I, I don't like talking about my past to people it's like no you don't dude you love talking to people about shit like that's what you do it's like your favorite thing <laughs> to yeah. do like you're so clearly cool. lying so like, he like because he literally goes from telling all about his life and then when asked I don't that, like talking about my past here's my biography then when asked <laughs> and then when asked about Sean Connery's James Bond he immediately goes into like oh uh, you know I don't like you know, talking about stuff that, you know, like that's close to the heart. I don't like talking about that. So I did like that. They kind of, they don't come out and straight up say, Oh, it's yeah. a, so, but watch it now. It's like, how do people not understand that this is a 
like obviously people who I feel like the people who have this argument, just like I have with people, never actually like watch James Bond. Yeah, well, we've me. never seen it. We're yeah. just going off of what we think, and then if you watch it, it's very clear. Yeah. It's uh, just an alias. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was never like I was like dead set on my side yeah, of things. But like on Reddit, clearly, you know, people are going to take sides. And the James Bond Reddit, I feel like none of them have actually watched the movies. I I, I mean, you would have to imagine. Yeah. Like, I've never heard anything but great things about the James Bond series. And, you know, I've always, oh, it's so oh, Bond, Brandon Bond. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, and it's fine. It's not it's it's not a terrible thing for people to associate your name with. But honestly, every movie I watch, it's getting worse and worse. Yeah, I, I feel th- like you're making fun of me. I think it's <laughs> going to get better sure. once we get the Brosnan. I yeah. hope. I think. Once it gets more modern. I mean, we're just not. I'm just not a, an action movie guy as is. I so think Daniel like, Craig will be good. Um, sure. Like, I don't think that the, the newer ones will be bad movies because they'll, they'll be, be good special effect. And, yeah. and like, you know, they know more. The editing will be better. Halle Berry's in one, right? Yeah. You know, which I'm super excited about, you know. That's dope. It's the DC crossover. She plays Catwoman. I think it's like one of those things of like, we just don't really know anybody. You know, yeah. like, it's not like we can the know time, the Because like, these were famous actors. And sure. some of the Bond women were like famous, like, singers. Yeah. Which is weird that so many times they and brought like, in like, some fam- of them are hotties. Like, in, yeah. the, in the man with the golden gun, good night. Yeah. She's no, cute. The, the Russian She's spy cutie. is a hottie in, in this one. Yeah. Some of them have just not been great. Like, it's just, it's, and also, like, I'm, I'm glad we're past the you know the pussy galore like it's just too too much too on the nose right yeah we will continue for the people when uh, are we doing our next drinking game we'll it's got to be coming up soon yeah, it's got to be coming up soon we'll look at the schedule and we'll figure it out i think we're gonna do let's do one more and then let's maybe take our austin powers breather before we get to our uh, do our one more drinking game one more drinking game and then, and then after that oh, austin please powers. dude i love austin yeah, powers dude. that's I my jam excited so, uh, so excited yeah. about that. All right. You got some questions for us. Uh, mix them up here. There is one that's a surprise to you. I didn't read it to you. Cool. I wanted it to be. Because you always do that to me. I mean, I have the chance to read the doc, but you know I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, all right. What are the best TV show theme songs of all time? Well, you don't have to. You don't have to narrow one down, but just yeah. throw a couple out. There. Friends is great. Friends, okay, okay. Rocket Friends Power is good. Is good. That is a one I did not think of. Now, uh, can they be cloak? For example, Curb Your Enthusiasm, famous closing, but and many people would say that's the Curb theme. Well, it it's ha- a theme song. Okay, it says theme songs. It doesn't say opening theme songs. Now, in my head, I can't put together this thing bow, 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 bow. but like i feel like full house had a good one maybe i could just be pulling that out of thin air and that might not something san francisco no yeah. no no you're it's 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 what i'm it, the humming it's oh i don't know clearly what not. happens uh clearly fresh prince is up mm-hmm. there oh fresh prince is sick i did not have that either i'm trying to think of like how the <laughs> whatever happened to <laughs> uh, now i gotta look it up yeah now it's look it up me it's yeah <laughs> san francisco <laughs> san francisco <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut it off. We're going to get sued by Bob Saget. And I don't feel like he would like even hesitate. But you know what it is now in your yeah. head, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I guess I'll go through a few of mine. Dude, Dexter to me. Whoa, that slaps, dude. Like <laughs> talking about Dexter's Laboratory. I was like, I can't. Dexter's Lab can't was great, too. Um, no, Dexter, the Game the of Thrones show. is obviously a. Game elite. of Thrones is on there. It's super elite, dude. Uh, yeah. Love it so much. Um, the Wire to me, and then how every season always had a, a different person singing the the song. Uh, the Sopranos to oh, me, yeah, so good, killer. Um, One Tree Hill, obviously dominate with my boy uh, Gavin DeGraw. Smallville, great. Somebody never saw, it, never, That's never great. seen Smallville, uh, an episode of Smallville in my life. Uh. Uh, Edelweiss on uh, the Man in the High Castle. Oh yeah, super super killer to me. Mad Men is unique. King of the Hill, love King of the Hill. Oh, um, yeah. The Americans, love the Americans too. 
True Blood is, a, is, an, is True Blood is a good one. Agreed, agreed. Basically, we could pretty much probably just say every HBO show ever made in the history of HBO shows. West Parks World. and Rec. Parks and Rec is good too. The Office. It's a classic. You may not like The Office, no, no, it's but a great, the, and listen, but I the be theme song. I love The Office. I think The Office is one of the greatest shows. You hate shows Michael Scott. I hate. Which means you love The uh, You hate The Office. Everybody no, knows it. No. Everybody knows it, bro. Love, no. Everybody knows it. Let me hit you with this. Sports Center. Oh, yeah. The most iconic uh, little, at least in the at least in the sports fan guy's world. Yeah, when it leads into SVP. Da-na-na. Da-na-na. Just like, you know, like you hear that noise, you're like, what's up, dude? Something has happened. Something has yeah. happened here. Um, Give I it to me, Scott Van Pelt. Not a TV show per se, but I would say that the Bulls uh, yeah. theme music. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really big. Who, right? uh, I want to say yes, but I do not. I would not be able to lock that down as a, as a for sure. Um. Hmm. Trying to think. Trying to think. Frasier. Love Frasier. And then you can't go Frasier without Cheers as well. Yeah. Uh, I think Cheers is a where everybody knows your name. Oh, bro, bro. Yeah. I mean, if you say it, you're just like, you just see Norm walking in right now, right? Yeah. You know? I don't know why I can't find like it's isn't it like Eye in the Sky or something? I don't think it's by the Who. Okay. We got any, you got any more that you want to throw uh, out there? No, it's the Alan Parsons project. I don't know why I thought the who. Home Improvement, too, though. I like Home Improvement. Uh, uh, yeah. That's love Home Improvement. Uh, any more you can think of? I can think of. Yeah. Was, was Boy Meets World good or not? I can't yes. remember if it was yes. a good intro. Boy Meets World was good, actually. I really love And I love well, Boy Meets World. A lot of TV shows have great intros. It's almost yeah. as if they pay people lots of money to get uh, intros that hook people the in. Boy Meets World. <laughs> just a bunch of dudes in the backyard. Boy Meets World. I wish all TV shows were just, were just, like, were just melodic in, uh, in, like, descriptions of the show. <laughs> bunch of brothers dealing with <laughs> stuff. The teacher lives behind uh-huh. them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tim uh, Allen is a bad husband, but a good dad. But he also has a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude next door that doesn't. You never see his is face. He, is he a little racist? We don't know. We're not sure. Because <laughs> he's two of Tim, the two man Taylor in this show. He's not himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now this one you we can name a couple, but I wanna I wanna land on something. Okay. Who is your favorite movie villain? Hmm. I mean Thanos is dope. Okay, Thanos is really I, I, sick. I don't know if I'm landing on it, but I'm in my head. That's the first yeah, one. Darth that comes Vader to mind. is the I mean, obviously yeah, it's honestly, the picture. Dar- I'll be honest though, Darth Vader is kind of a shitty villain. Like, what does he actually accomplish? Like, he doesn't sure. accomplish much. Agreed. Thanos follows fucking through, dude. No, I agree with that, but it's more of like... And, and again, what, I think... What Vader represented. Yeah. Saying very little in that first, in the, the A New Hope. And then just the aura, yeah. the aura about Yeah, him. but you could say the same thing about Jaws from Jaws. I'm assuming the shark's yeah. name is Jaws. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But like you don't even really see yeah. Jaws, right? Like yeah. you don't really see the the shark that much. Whereas Vader was like a presence. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of other villains. Like I I'm I mean the fact that only really like Thanos Sauron. Sauron I, I would yeah. say he's fun, but he's not a he's not a, a an overwhelming villain in the yeah. show. I would say Saruman was more compelling in the show or in the movies than Sauron was. Now, I know you're not a Batman guy, but Heath Ledger's Joker is a oh good villain. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? That is literally one of the greatest villains of all time. It was, yeah. I mean, yes, I 100% agree. I'm not a Batman guy, but Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight so, with... Uh, <laughs> I did a quick, you know, just I typed in movie villains just to get to kind of get my brain going. For Lord of the Rings... You know who they put down as the villain of the movie? Golem. <laughs> That's who they put down as the villain. Which, I mean, sure. Fair. Fair. Um, okay, let me hit you with this. Agent Smith is a good one. 
I know you don't like Matrix, but Agent Smith was a good villain. He was a good villain. Hold on one sec. I've got Voldemort's one in my a mind. Shitty villain. Couldn't even beat a kid. Like, dude, you all you did was literally kill a baby. Hold on, I've got one, and I'm just like totally blanking on a name here. And I'm gonna be so mad at myself. Ooh, you know who's a great villain? Danny LaRusso from Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That is so true. Because he absolutely is. Oh, he yeah. is, is that the, creep is the yeah. worst. I am like having a Biff t- Biff from Back to the Future is a decent William role. Defoe's Green Goblin to me, dude, is a pretty epic, epic yeah. villain in my mind. And let me hit you with this. Tom Hiddleston's Loki Avengers one. Yeah. Because uh-huh. he's, he's a great because very rarely can he be a great villain, but also a great hero later in the series. Anti hero. We've discussed this. Well, well. <laughs> in the show, uh, I would Doc say Ock, he's actually, uh, yeah. the guy that played Doc Ock was uh, also great. Uh, 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 what's his name? Alan Alda. Al- I think it. No, it's not <laughs> Alan Alda. I was like, what? No. <laughs> you were almost in on it, though. I almost got you. I almost sold you on it. Um, I, I was never a huge fan. They have on the picture here Predator. Oh, the yeah. Predator, I don't, yeah, I don't really uh, necessarily agree with that. Uh, Molino, Molina, uh, something Molina. Benji Molina, the catcher <laughs> for the. <laughs> um, let me hit you with this, though. Um, now I'm just imagine Alan Alda as Doc Ock. <laughs> well, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> um, Alfred Molina. I was close. Okay, okay. Let me hit you with this, and I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge fan per se of this i think we've even talked about it but alan rickman's uh hans gruber was I mean, a pretty great was christmas a pretty villain. icon <laughs> no <laughs> no my parents are very much on the uh on the argument side of the uh of it being a christmas movie too uh, i think i pretty much almost i think i r- almost ruined father's day like because like you know me i get i get un i get like way too mad over something Nobody's that ever doesn't said you get matter over excited about things well That's i not, get mad yeah, about yeah. it you know i'm like it's not a christmas she's like well you cannot have christmas i'm like i don't even want christmas if you think this is a christmas movie i'm already i'm worked up about it right now so um yeah those are a couple i guess the question ones. is now what we is, gotta land on it land where you're where, oh, where you're uh, at i'm gonna land with thanos okay i think thanos, thanos is, a, is Great villain, an over. I mean, very, I mean, usually when villains have like multiple movies, you know, sometimes they kind of falter. But honestly, he was great, even after they killed him. Bro, it's great. Josh Brolin, dude. I mean, he's yeah. fantastic. It's, I mean, he, they killed the actor. Uh, killed the actor. They killed. They killed. They murdered <laughs> he's him. Super method. Once he's dead. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, Chris Hems. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth literally chopped it his head off. Di- Listen for a guy because I think that was was that after uh uh not Daredevil uh. Deadpool 2 when that came out because if, if he because if he because if he was uh what's his it was if he was in cable Deadpool, if he was cable with his head cut off I mean give it up to him. give the guy the Oscar yeah I think I am gonna go and I'm gonna switch it up on somebody that I have not named I am going with Magneto Ooh. in the uh in in a, in more specifically to be fair, the young Magneto to be fair some say he's actually not a villain an anti-hero i mean he was probably. i mean if you kill, okay well then i'm gonna stick yeah, i'm, I'm gonna stick in the nazis, same thing you get to if you kill a nazis you're, 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 you're i'm sticking with the same thing then and i'm going with apocalypse yeah. i mean i was joking he's clearly, <laughs> no, I I mean, mags is clearly a villain in the movie yeah no i i i, I love magneto especially the younger one. honestly young and old dude Ian McKellen oh killed. ian mckellen killed it too but just like the storyline in the younger ones was really in this on, new marvel game i'm playing the magneto like voice acting is so, so good that's awesome and like he has like because one of the characters you to play a storm and so like his interactions with storm is real good Halle Berry storm oh no but a good storm still a good storm all right <clears throat> you ready bob for this question this is the one you don't know about hit me you go to a girlfriend's house and meet her father for the first time he hands you an aux cord what song are you playing first that's fire. I mean, you're playing with fire here. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you do not have one, I have mine. I mean, I'm, I I'm just gonna, I mean, I, you, you can't, you got to play it safe and go with like a personal favorite. Oh, you're going to go play it safe. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, go for it. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not hating. 
right? <laughs> by Cardi. No, that's <laughs> a good choice. I was actually, uh, I, was, I was, I mean, beautiful lose by Bob Seger. We went, okay. went over the parents almost immediately. Oh, I'm not trying to win over the parents with oh, my you song. You just want to let them know exactly what your intentions What's are. What's up, bro? I'm going to hit him and I'm going to look straight in his Talk eyes. The police by NWA? No, I'm going to, unless he's a cop, in which case, <laughs> yeah, boom, it's in. No, I'm going to look this man straight in the eye. I'm not even going to look at the, the, the phone. I'm just going to plug it in. Ignition remix by R. Kelly, dude. Just like, and just look at him. Just like, the best of R. Kelly. Well, no, I mean that yeah. specifically, but like, no, I don't want, I believe I can fly to come on. He, I don't want him to think that yeah. I'm going to, well, I'm going to build yeah, up his yeah. daughter. That was your job, bro. <laughs> That's your job. This yeah. is, she's my equal. We're going to be dating. We're going to be kicking and it. Assume, and out. because it is R. Kelly, I'm assuming that you want to make sure you get her in time for her elementary school uh, the ne- day, the next day, right? Absolutely. I mean. <laughs> Cause she's a teacher there. Everybody, right. everybody yeah. at home, chill out. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like you just gotta, yeah. I mean, I hear what you're saying. Like, you know, you want to want to impress these folks. If I'm trying to impress, I guess I'm going with like a somebody to love by queen. You know what I'm saying? Like if I really enjoy this person. But also, I'm just imagining now a world in which, like, that is what, like, you if you do walk in, he's like, like, where, where's the ox? How long is that ox cord? And where's the speaker system set up in that house? I am, I am, <laughs> obvi- honestly, if I ever have a daughter, this is it, dude. This is no shotgun cleaning yeah, or anything even like if you have this. A son, if it's just, I mean, if, if, yeah. if a girlfriend goes to picking up, girlfriend or, or, boyfriend, or a boyfriend or yeah. whatever, dude, Give just like ox cord. my judgment is not here to say, oh, you're gay. Or, oh, you're straight, or, oh, you're a guy, or you're a girl, or, or uh, you know, uh, you know a, a transsexual. I don't care about any of that, okay? What's your music? You, not even that. What is, that, that makes it harder. Like, not what style of music do you like? I'm not asking them to put on a Pandora station that they enjoy. I'm saying, this is your one chance to ne- not be hated by me forever. Play one song. You know what would be a safe bet, no matter what? Just jock jams. I want some jock jams. You immediately like everyone's going to be happy with some jock jams. If he hits you, dude, if if one of these uh, boys, girls, he, she, them, they, whatever pronoun you use, if you come in and you hit me with Cotton Eye Joe, you immediately have my respect. <laughs> yeah. I'll shake your hand or or hug you or, you know, whatever the kids are doing those yeah. days, you know, they're maybe they're back to pounding it, you hit, know, hit them with the bulls uh, intro. There's like a few songs that it would like you would be immediately garner my respect. And then there are a few that uh, we'd probably have some issues just after that. Like just I know we talked about earlier, but if you come in, if you and if I give you the auction, you play the full house intro. Something's going on. There's something weird. That's weird. <laughs> it's like this was a, but like, it does <laughs> slap. <laughs> yeah. It's like, or, how old are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing here? Like if you play some like 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 Beethoven. Like, I'm going to be like, this is sick, but this is also very strange yeah. for this to be the first. You play Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. You're in, dude. You're yeah. we're not even going on a date anymore. You're dating my daughter <laughs> right now. <laughs> you're hanging out here. Do you want to live here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's get over to what are you binging? Uh, we started Ted Lasso. And yeah. honestly, I think I put that as one of my what are you bingings? At yeah, one my point, wife's right? not a huge fan of it. She thinks it's a little campy and it's like she's just not a fan of that. style. Megan of hates everything, though. So that's not surprising. Yeah. She's a big fan of this show called Manifest, which is pretty bad. Is it? Do they? Is it terrible? Yes. Yeah, that's Megan's <laughs> type of show, dude. <laughs> Megan loves terrible shows. So she's in. Yeah. She's good. Um, I love it. I think it's a very, it's a very depressing show. Um, but I love it. Roy Kent's fucking amazing. Yeah. He's here. He's here. He's there. He's every fucking where. Jamie Tart. Do, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, college football for me and margaritas, bro. I super appreciate you leaving your machine and now your mom's p- party has been canceled. So the machine stays longer. <laughs> I have finished the house bottle of tequila that your mother and you purchased for me. So, <laughs> I don't know if you get two house bottles or <laughs> what, but I am out. Currently. I mean, you can. You can go to this liquor store. Also, I've been uh, Old Bay Rimming, dude. Nice. Old Bay Rimming it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so that's what I've been, I've been up to nice. lately. Let's jump into what's snapping your stick. Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. All right, 
that. This is th something I've been I've complained about this for years. And it's always the first two weeks of the and there's always some good games, but cupcake games. Usually some years are better than others. Some years that there are enough good games to, to even out the, 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 the scheduling that is the first week. And this week of college football, Bobby hates uh, young co college programs and kids and clear. doesn't want them to I don't succeed. Give, I don't give two flying shits about small college. I don't, I don't, I don't care about college. I care about football. Could have been us, dude. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, not us playing, oh. but like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're at MTSU. Like we have definitely garnered some money yeah, from these fine. big programs. But at the same time, I don't like I don't I'm watching this as a fan of the game. Not oh, a fan did of you a, were you a fan of the Popeyes in the student union? Because we we have even had that without all this money coming in. I, I didn't. I never got that. I never ate in the student union. So. Why wouldn't you eat this? There's Panda Express in there, bro. Because I lived off campus and I, I, I get out of class. I go immediately home. I also live off campus, but like you only had like one class at a time and I, they're right next to each other all the time. That is not how everyone specifically scheduled their classes. I never I, if I, if well, I, I mean, there's some breaks in between. I not once in my entire college career have I had to be on campus like like for more than like 15 minutes between classes. I always specifically get now. Yes, I did seven years because sometimes if, even if it was <laughs> <laughs> because even if, if I couldn't schedule a class, I would have made you pay for that computer, dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, I did seven years. What? Up? <laughs> if I had if I, literally multiple times, it's like, wait, I have to be on. I have to wait an hour between classes. Then I'll just take it next semester. Some I'm like just barely above full time just because I'm 13 like, years later. It's like I'm just waiting for this one class to just line up correctly. Literally, my last semester, my set my, my last semester, I had one class because I couldn't take it the semester before. Now that was a legitimate reason, not of a well, I'm not gonna sit on campus for an hour. Well, I wanted to get my hope scholarship my last semester, so I took an extra class, and then like when it was W time, I was like, Peace. Oh no, there, there were many times that I had to take extra bullshit classes to keep full time. Like, oh, I guess I'm taking weightlifting for the fourth time yeah like, <laughs> it's like uh, well, i hope it's not too far of a walk no, because i'm out <laughs> uh, but yeah so i mean it's just like i don't want to watch like these teams beat up just for the sake of like this why like i get why money the, no i know i get why the, the small schools doing it but it, like what I, I i'm still very confused like so i'm assuming the small school is paying the big school to play them no the big school pays the small school so what is the big school fucking earning other than just a w is that what they're is that well, what they're it's paying basically for? like a scream basically basically paying for a scrimmage they're not a scrimmage before the season yeah but it's not the same you can't lay out your own teammate you know you can't no, no, murder no. that scrimmage quarterback these, they can scrimmage them before this like have a preseason why would that why would that small school do that if you're telling me that if Alabama set up a game between some school before the season, the SEC network wouldn't air it? SEC network would air it, but me as that small school, what do I gain by going out there and maybe getting all of my players hurt? That's the they're not going to get a W in the regular. I mean, why? I mean, Money. they're getting in the same Money. No, no. But if Alabama will still pay them to come out and scrimmage them in preseason. Listen, I've been very clear about my beliefs. I well, think, but also, but also, I mean, kids want to be on national TV, bro. Let it be on national TV. Just let it be in preseason. Yeah, there ain't no preseason, though. There well, is regulations with how many games these kids can play. And I hate it. They, okay. They either, well, you're talking about the rules. Yeah. Of it no, at this listen, point. there needs to be a choice. You're either a college, you, you, if you're a college, if you're a college kid or you're a football player. I don't like inter I don't like the term student athlete because you're not. You're an athlete or you're or you're a student. And you can, if you want to be both fine, but just you like you can't how, be two things, but buddy. Just, but just like, but just like students go on and work at Popeyes, students can also go on and work for a football team. They shouldn't be combined. There should be the NCAA well, should just be. They'll get paid at this point. The, so. the NCAA should just be like the championship league to the Premier League. That's all it should be. I, I I've never enjoyed. Look, you're you're going deeper into yeah. your what snapping your stick, bro. Like. I get it. You don't like the cupcakes, but now we're just like trying to change the landscape and the rules. Like, I don't make Thank the you. rules. I'll make the rules. Like, I you're call making your some guy, great points. Get it done. <laughs> you're making some good points. Call I Kirk feel Kirk you. Street, have him call his guy. I feel you. Like, I feel you. I'm with you on a lot of that. But like, you're just asking me why. I'm explaining why, and now you're coming at me like, way to go, buddy. Like, I was like there when ben, they wrote the rule. Why have you done this to me? <laughs> like, I am so sorry. I did not mean it. I did not mean to. I promise. If I had the choice, I wouldn't care about the Popeyes or the the 
Panda Express student union. You know, I wouldn't care about it. I didn't know you went seven years, so you didn't have to. <laughs> Listen, so you didn't have to eat on campus, I'm dude. Exaggerate, <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit. It was six, but still, I mean, you get the point. It was. I six. rounded up for some reason. I from six to seven. I uh, I took a I took a sabbatical one year. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, mine disappointing. It's funny we have like literally the opposite. <laughs> disappointing big games in college football. I would have just rather seen Clemson absolutely wreck, uh, you know, Bobby's school for the blind dude. Like, you know, like, I don't know. No, I mean, they were just not, not as fun as they were hyped up to be mostly in my mind. You know, I mean, yeah. Georgia Clemson at I the beginning of the year. Cause COVID was going on and we we're like, okay, it's college football time. Like even I, as someone who's sure, college football, fan, I still got, I still get excited for college football rolls around. Yeah. I still, I'm like, I, I tell myself, yeah, I don't really care. I still sat down and watched a full game of college football yeah. and still enjoyed myself watching the game of football. College football is fun, dude. To yeah. me. You know, I, mean, I love college football. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, to me, it's, I don't, I sometimes don't enjoy, I don't enjoy it as much as NFL, but that's because I don't have as much on the well, line with my own stake as fantasy, far as fantasy yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. I prefer fantasy over anything. Uh, but as far as just watching a game, if I have to watch a game, most certainly going to be college football over NFL for me. No question. But All right, guys. Boom, we boom, will boom. see y'all next week. Uh, have a good one. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pots Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pucks Out Pod.